Hi, I'm Dr. Adam Oliver Brown, professor of biology at the University of Ottawa, and today I'll be walking you through a history of life on our planet using this field track as our guide. Currently, the world record for running around this track is about 43 seconds. But what if it took 4 billion years, which is just about how long life has existed on planet Earth from its very beginning to today? Now, as we stand here on the starting line, we recognize that the Earth has already been around for about 500 million years, or having started about 50 meters back that way. And as I start walking into the future, each one meter step on this 400 meter track represents about 10 million years. 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million. The time scale is really hard to imagine. So we're approaching our first benchmark along the way at 20 meters down the line. And currently there's no life here. It's just organic molecules starting to form, amino acids, nucleotides, protoenzymes that will eventually become enclosed in a membrane and form our very first living organism at about 3.8 billion years ago, the prokaryotic bacteria. So these simple single-celled organisms were basically just like self-replicating molecules enclosed in a sack. They were swimming around these primordial seas, gobbling up loose bits of material that are around, until some of them, later down the line, began to evolve a means by which they could make their own food by harnessing energy from the sun through a process known as photosynthesis. Here we have the emergence of the cyanobacteria photosynthesizing for the first time. And the byproduct of that food was oxygen that was being spewed into the atmosphere and would later create conditions that would give rise to the ability to have life on land. But that's some 300 meters down the line or another 3 billion years from now. You'll notice between here and the next benchmark, we've got quite a ways to cover. this one and a half billion years or so of life on Earth that was dominated by these really simple prokaryotic bacteria, we approach our next milestone at about two billion years into this story when these prokaryotic bacteria started bumping into each other and fusing and engulfing one another in a process known as endosymbiosis, which essentially means living inside one another. And we have the emergence of much bigger cells, much more complex known as eukaryotes, very much like the protozoans and amoebas that we have nowadays. Now it'll take another 100 meters of track or another billion years of these more complex single-celled organisms to start bumping into each other and fusing to form the first multicellular organisms that will eventually give rise to modern day plants, animals, and fungi. come three quarters of the way around our track or represented three billion years of life on earth and we haven't even yet got to see the evolution of modern animals or plants. Most of life on earth throughout much of its existence has been in the form of single-celled organisms and the earth would be completely unrecognizable to most of us today. Shortly after the emergence of these multicellular life forms, we start to see the evolution of a greater diversity of forms of life, especially in a burst of diversity at a time around 540 million years ago, what we call the Cambrian explosion, where we saw the emergence of most animal lineages that would give rise to invertebrates and mollusks and segmented worms and strange segmented creatures that would eventually give rise to the ancestors of fish and other vertebrates, including ourselves. And just a few more meters down our track, which still represents about 50 million years or so later, we have the emergence of the first forms of life on land. 
starting with plants that would inch their way inwards, mosses and ferns from the edges of swamps. They were followed by insects that would learn to fly and exploit these plants as a food source in terms of eating their leaves and flowers and seeds. And then came the vertebrates afterwards, the amphibia looking to feed on these insects that were abundant in this terrestrial world. Thankfully, some of these amphibia later evolved a means by which they could lay their eggs on land and become truly terrestrial creatures because a cataclysmic event occurred at about 250 million years ago where we're approaching right now. As the continents are surfing around on the planet and moving together, at this point, at 250 million years ago, they formed the supercontinent, Pangaea, which changed the world dramatically. Most marine life died out in mass extinctions, and the only life that was able to colonize this new world on the terrestrial environment were those that were pre-adapted to be able to live in the new hot and dry climate. The descendants of the amphibia that could lay their eggs on land, the reptiles. And for the next 200 million years or so, we have the age of dinosaurs that gave us the Tyrannosaurus rex, the Stegosaurus, the Pterosaurus, and of course, the crocodiles and birds that were their next of kin. As we move forward on this new supercontinent of Pangaea in this hot and dry world, it is now dominated by dinosaurs. And I pass this pylon at the 380 meter mark, which represents a relatively insignificant event that will become much more important much later. That was the emergence of the first mammals. Now these small mouse-like creatures would be scurrying around underfoot, just basically trying to avoid being eaten by the monstrous dinosaurs that are there at the time but that would have been relatively well pre-adapted to survive the next event that occurs right here at 65 million years ago, a cataclysmic one that would change the world forever. The impact of a huge asteroid on Earth. Now this asteroid wiped out most life forms because it shrouded the Earth in a cloud of volcanic ash for about five months of darkness. And all of those big creatures that needed to run around and chase their food died off meaning the end of the age of dinosaurs and the beginning of the modern era, the age of mammals. As the continents pulled apart and began to cool, the mammals diversified and began to inhabit the variety of ecosystems that came to be. As the whales and the horses and the bears and the primates evolved and began to inhabit the seas and the prairies and the northern forests and the tropical jungles of this newest of worlds. And here, almost at the finish line, down one of the primate twigs of the mammal branch of this big tree of life of ours was the ancestor of humans who began to wander about in the African savannas upright for the first time around three million years ago, or just a short school ruler away from the finish line. What would not have been possible were it not for the demise of the dinosaurs some six and a half meters or so back that way, gave rise to our own ancestors that eventually would appear on the scene just two centimeters before the finish line or some 200,000 years ago. The true modern humans or Homo sapiens. At this point, a small ruler length away from the finish line is when humans started walking upright in the African savannas about three million years ago. This two centimeters represented by the thickness of about two decks of cards is the human timescale. With this deck of cards representing the human timescale, each individual card is actually 2,000 years. If we were to shuffle back, oh, 40,000 years or so, or just about a half a centimeter in thickness, we get to our latest cousins, the Neanderthals, who went extinct about 40,000 years ago and cohabited Europe with us up until about that point. If we shuffle through a few more cards into the future, we get to the Upper Paleolithic era, about 25,000 years ago, where we were master and stone carvers making sculptures like this Venus. A few cards later, we find ourselves having adapted our media to cave paintings such as these in the Lascaux Caves of the south of France around 17,500 years ago. Just a few short cards into the future, at 12,000 years ago, we have the last Ice Age. One card later, 10,000 years ago, the advent of agriculture, which allowed us humans to become sedentary and form cities that would later become civilizations, leading to institutions such as education and political foundations. 
A few cards later, and we have the peaks of the ancient Egyptian civilization with the construction of the pyramids at about 4,000 years ago. One card later, and we are more or less in the modern era since Roman times. So this last card, which represents 2,000 years, is the last sliver of time and holds just about everything we can think of in terms of human civilization. From wars through dynasties, world conquest and colonization, through the Enlightenment, the Industrial Revolution, and the Internet. So we've come a long way from the origin of life, way back in the mists of time. But the story of life on the planet is a long and a varied one, with many epochs and eras along the way. From ancient seas full of photosynthetic cyanobacteria, to swamp lands governed by insects and amphibia, to hot, dry desert environments dominated by large reptiles, to a modern mammal age that gave rise to two-footed, sentient, ape-like creatures that we call humans. So join us next time as we revisit this time scale and look at a few other stops along the way and highlight changes in the Earth's atmosphere in terms of concentrations of gases that were created by those photosynthetic cyanobacteria and the plants, as well as the emissions from industry and volcanic eruptions that would tilt the scale the other way and make conditions less favorable for life on this planet, including for ourselves, the humans.